What's going on everybody, it's Charles. Recently we did a teardown video on this TSI cylinder head where the owner of the vehicle money shifted at a high RPM from third gear to second gear instead of third gear to fourth gear, blew the rockers off on the valve train and basically had a ruined engine, got a new engine, customer's on his way, but we have the engine to do some teardown work. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check that out. But in the comments of that video, you guys had a bunch of questions and pointed out some things that you were curious about. So we're gonna address all of those today. We're gonna do a teardown on the bottom end, look at the pistons, look at the bearings, look at the thrust washer, which is a somewhat common GTI issue, especially if you have a modified clutch. First up, we're gonna look at the cylinder head. There was a ton of comments that said, hey Charles, it looks like this cylinder head is cracked. And while I was reading those comments, I'm like, I thought that was just a casting mark, but you guys could be right. So here's our cylinder head. Let's dive in, take a look at this, then we'll do the bottom end of the engine. Here is our cylinder head. And just for a quick refresh, some of the damage to our valve train and some of these deep, deep gouging on the cylinder head. So I think the point that people were talking about that it looked like the cylinder head was cracked is right here, right along these pieces right here that go up to the cam bearing journals. So I can totally see how that looks like it's cracked because I mean, honestly, it does kind of look cracked, but I actually think this is just casting. I'm pretty sure they're all that way. And if we go down our valve train, we can see that one looks the same, that one looks the same, that one looks the same, even at the back. You can see right there, even at the back, it looks like that marking there. It's probably just casting marks. I don't have another one of these TSI engines taken down to compare it to, but I'm pretty sure that all is just casting on the cylinder head. One of the biggest questions that you guys asked is do we have a bent connecting rod? Well, it doesn't really look like there's any valve to piston impact, but I think it is worth doing some measurement to find out. First thing we need to do is get everything out of the way. Now we can clean this off, get a little bit better view of the block surface. What I'm looking at here is the very tops of the cylinders to see if there's any nicks or gouges or anything like that. Usually when you have that, not always, but usually it really stands out. Next, we're gonna get it set up so we can rotate the crankshaft around and look at how our pistons go up and down. Now for the initial inspection, I'm going to just raise them all the way up to what looks like top dead center. We'll measure what top dead center actually is in a minute, but this is just a visual inspection. If the connecting rod has been bad enough, we'll see it here. Our primary issues really were on cylinders one and two. So that's where I'm gonna be focusing on. Two's easy, cause it's right next to three and those two pistons come up together. So it looks like these are pretty much the same. A measurement will tell us for sure. Let's do cylinders one and four. I'm also getting a really thorough look on the top crown of the piston, and I don't see any impact from valve to piston at all. I've seen a lot of timing chain failure on, on these styles of engine, but it always leaves an indentation. You can see these marks right here. These are actually recesses cut into the piston. That's normal, that's supposed to be there, but I don't see any, any real issues. Taking another look at the cylinder bores. Those look all right, no scoring or anything. Next, we're gonna set up our dial indicator, and what this is gonna allow us to do is find true top dead center for each piston. All right, let's go ahead and measure cylinder two first. We're gonna get the piston close to top dead center. So this is like an eyeball inspection of, yeah, that looks like about TDC or just before TDC is also good. So now we're, we're at what looks like to be TDC. Let's clean this off a little bit. And we wanna be consistent on the spot that we check with all the other cylinders. So it looks like there's a stamp on it. We'll go right near the stamp. Now it doesn't really matter what these numbers are. All we're doing is we're using this dial indicator to determine the exact point of top dead center. I'm gonna back it back a little bit. We can see it going backwards. We're gonna slowly crank it up. We'll get to a point where the gauge stops going up and starts going back down. That'll be the point of hitting true TDC. So I was actually, I was actually right on it. So that should be our TDC mark. Once we know we're all the way up at TDC, true TDC of the piston, 
it's time to take our measurements. The way you take that measurement is gonna depend on what type of engine setup you have, what kind of piston it is, what kind of block it is and whatnot. But there's two main ways that we would do this. Way number one and probably the more accurate way is going to be with a straight edge and feeler gauges. We set our straight edge on the block, we take our feeler gauge and we go underneath it and see what our clearance is. So for example, this is 0 0.008 inches or 0 0.203 millimeters. And we take that measurement. And for this one, I would be looking to do it on number two and on number three. Of course, with these very fine measurements, we would wanna make sure this was totally clean. Unfortunately, Volkswagen doesn't list any specifications for this measurement. So really, all we're doing is comparing our companion pistons. These are both up at TDC at the same time, cylinders two and cylinder three. So essentially, they should have the same measurement. Way number two is going to be with our caliper tool. And what we would do here is we would zero this out, we would extend it, and we're gonna be using the bottom portion of the caliper in order to take our measurement. Get it on a nice clean square spot, and then push down on the top to take the measurement, and that'll give us our reading. Our pistons are almost exactly flush with our engine block. That does make taking this measurement a little bit trickier. Now we're not really worried about all the connecting rods being bent. The only two places we really had a bad problem was one and two. So I think visually comparing two and three for this case is gonna be enough. And these are almost exactly flush with the block. I think it's pretty safe to say we don't have a bent connecting rod for cylinder two. Let's do, go ahead and do the same thing for cylinder one. Remember, it doesn't matter what these numbers are. We're only looking at the gauge movement to be sure that we're all the way at TDC. So we've got to the top and we started to go back down. All right, so that's below TDC coming up. And right about there is our TDC line. And we'll do basically the exact same thing. We'll set our straight edge and we are basically flush. I think if I clean some of that carbon yuck off, we might be able to get a measurement, but we're pretty much flush here. And I'm just gonna check cylinder four really quick and we're roughly the same across the board. So I don't think we're going to have a bent connecting rod. However, I do like the idea of taking this bottom end apart. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and take our lower oil pan off. Oops, I'm so dumb. So dumb, so dumb. Next, let's get this little windage tray off here. Okay. Oil pickup next. Man, everything's coming off on this one. Now we gotta take the rear main seal partly off at least. Now we can take off our oil pump. All right, next it looks like we got a whole bunch of T45s and a handful of triple squares we need to take out. Ooh, ah, oh, it's oozing down the backside. Gross. Here is this upper oil pan. No extreme sadness yet. Since we do have the possibility of this engine being rebuilt at some point, I wanna do a little bit of marking on some components we're gonna remove to make sure that whoever does the rebuild doesn't have an issue going back together with it. So we're gonna number our main bearing caps real quick. We're gonna also go ahead and do the same thing for the pistons, just to make sure that they go back where they came from. Now odds are if the engine does get rebuilt, new pistons will be on the list of things to be replaced, but I don't wanna take any chances. I'd much rather over label it than under label it. All right, let's start by taking our pistons out. While we're here, let's go ahead and loosen up these main cap bolts. Something else that we're going to take a look at while we are here is the thrust bearing for the crankshaft. Now this has actually become kind of a known issue on this generation of engine, especially cars with a manual transmission and an upgraded clutch. And there's actually been a fair number of cases. Now, I don't think this is a common issue in the sense that like every single one will have it, but it is something to be aware of. So let's take these thrust bearings out 
and see what they look like. And after looking at the journals for the main bearings, as well as the connecting rod bearings, I don't see anything that really stands out to be an issue with the crankshaft itself. We'll take another look at the bearings because the bearings are a bit softer. So usually the bearings will show markings on them of damage a little bit sooner than the journals on the crankshaft will. But look at how much this crankshaft moves without that thrust bearing. So those thrust bearings are in there to prevent this. And when they fail, usually they fall out and into the pan and that allows the crankshaft to move back and forth and creates crank walk, walking back and forth. Usually that shows itself in really weird ways like the clutch pedal getting stuck to the floor, timing issues. Sometimes it'll even be something really weird like after making a hard turn, the next time they push the clutch in, the clutch won't come back up, but it's only in that instance. So weird, weird stuff. So we got our pistons, we got our main caps and bearings. Let's go ahead and do some inspections and see what these bad boys look like here. So on initial inspection, I don't see anything that really stands out on these pistons. I just took a quick look at them when I was taking them out. You can see there's a little bit of wear right there, right there, but that's not that big of a deal and pretty common on these engines. There is, however, a little bit of scoring right here. You can see this line, this really bright line right here. And normally what we would do is rub our finger on it and see if it catches our fingernail. It's catching my glove just a tiny bit. We'll do a little more thorough inspection on the cylinder for cylinder one and any other, any other issues that we found. And looking at the bearings, the bearings look fine. I don't see any issues at all with cylinder one. We were worried about a bent connecting rod. The way that we checked it when the piston was still in the block works really well. What we can also do is we can toss this straight edge right on our, along our connecting rod and look and see. You, if this connecting rod were bent or twisted, almost guarantee that you would see it. You could even take measurements throughout this connecting rod if you wanted to. That'd be another way to do it. Or take the piston itself off and then be able to go up the connecting rod a little bit to check it. But this looks pretty good. And remember, one and two were the ones that we were super concerned about because those were the ones that the uh, intake ports were full of oil and fuel, and the, the cylinder one is the one where the rocker was blown through the cover. So no, that same kind of wear that we saw on cylinder one will look really close here on the piston, and I'm telling you, I don't see a single mark where it looks like a valve hit this piston. Normally it's like right there, and right there where they get marked up when, say, the timing chain tensioner lets go. Bearings look good. Throw our straight edge on it. Looks nice and straight. So we're gonna call that one good. Since we have three and four out, there's no sense in not looking at them. Same wear. A little bit more, actually, on cylinder three than uh, one and two. There is, on this one, a tiny little weird mark right there on the bearing. It's super hard to see. You can see it just slightly right there. It's weird because it's just that spot. It almost makes me think that that mark was probably there before the bearing was even installed. And that has nothing to do with our engine wear. It's just like a weird little thing in the bearing. Go ahead and put our straight edge on it. Looks good there. And we'll go ahead and look at cylinder four. Same thing, looks good. Bearings look good. Throw our straight edge on it. Looks good there. So I think it's pretty safe to say we can call these pistons good. So for our main caps, this is gonna be the forwardmost cap. And there's not really too much to inspect on the outside of it, other than like if there were some really deep scratches or grooves in it, but we would have seen that. So we're mostly just looking at the bearing here. And I'm already seeing, oh boy, some unhappiness. Look at that scoring right there. So this is the side that would basically face uh, the next connecting rod. It doesn't go all the way through the bearing, so it's not on the whole radius of the bearing. It, you can see it stops right, right about there, I guess, give or take. So definitely not happy. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't want to put this bearing back in the car. Um, I didn't see any damage on the crankshaft, but we'll pull this bearing out on the bottom side. Well, actually the top side, 
and see what it looks like. Here's the next one. A similar little bit of wear, a little bit. Not too bad. Much less than, than the first one. I'll just call that number one, much less but definitely a little bit of marking. I would reinstall this bearing. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Here's our middle one. Now this is the one that has the thrust bearing attached with it as well. So the bearings are different. Looks pretty good. Let's inspect our thrust washers. So these sit on the top side. There's a tiny bit of marking on the end, both ends, not too bad. This is the side that faces away. So that cap that we just looked at with the bearing in it goes actually right here. So we'll probably want to take a look at the top bearing on this one as well to see what it looks like and get a tiny little bit of wear right about there. And we'll look at the other side. This is the back one. That other one went on the front side. So this face is the journal for the main bearing. And then this face is away. This one shows a lot more wear. Look at right there. Right there. Right, all through there actually. Since we're taking these out like on a rebuild, this would get replaced anyway, but there is definitely a little bit of bumpage. This one's got a little bit of marking on it, no big deal. See just a little bit. I mean, these are out, the bolts will need to be replaced. I'd probably toss new bearings in all of these if I was building a high horsepower engine. Just on a rebuild, eh. That first one I would be the most concerned about. This one again is not really that bad either. I see that weird mark, but I don't feel it. Let's see what happens with no glove on. Yeah, I still can't feel that. So that may just be a mark inside the bearing like from when it was made. I took the upper bearing from the first main cap that had that big scoring mark on it out and you can see a little bit of marking right here, but it actually doesn't look that bad. So I'm not sure why that bottom side bearing would have that scoring on it and just a tiny little marking here. Either way, if you replace one side bearing, you're gonna do the other side bearing anyway. So not a huge deal. I was just hoping for a little bit more evidence of the issue with this rather than just a tiny little bit of marking on the top side. This one is the top side bearing where the thrust washers live. So the bearings kind of sit, you know, sort of, Sort of like that. They prevent the front to back movement of the crankshaft. And I don't really see any issues here with this bearing at all. It looks pretty good. You'd probably see a lot of scoring and marking on the outer face right here of this bearing if that was truly, truly having a big time issue. All right, so there we have it. Not as much cool carnage as doing the top end but it's almost always a good time taking this kind of stuff apart and inspecting for damage. And of course, if this engine does get that full race car rebuild, I'll be sure to keep you guys posted. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time.